Hello, everyone, and welcome. We are back with Cars Casually. It is a nice sunny day, which is highly unusual because it's been boring lately from all over. It's been boring where everybody's been. In case you don't see them, we have in the room, but not on screen, Nick's. We have Den, who watches over our social media, but who who is from a family of drifters, by the way, so they should probably be super happy in this rain. We have Paolo, we have Francis, and we have me, Carl. Today, we're going to talk about the fact that it's sunny because we've been driving in the rain for a while. There's a lot to learn about driving in the rain. There are a lot of people who will purposely take their kids out in the rain, in the snow, in the mud, so they learn not to be scared, not to freak out when there's a drop of traction or whatever. I have found personally that if the rain is kind of strong, I like going out in, honestly, a sports car or an Audi. RS or something like that, because I like to be able to feel everything. I like the fact that the center of gravity is lower. As long as I know that I'm not going into somewhere flooded, in general, I'll be fine. And I'll feel everything better. I won't have wind. If, if you know, we're going to discuss this later. With rain, sometimes there's a lot of wind. I can see it now because the trees outside are almost sideways. And if that happens, you're going to be shifted and Nix is going to tell us some rather scary stories about having that happen in front of him. So we are going to talk now about what we need to know and we're going to start with Paolo. Paolo, what do we need to know about running in the rain? So as Carl has said, it's been raining a lot and even now it's sunny. Suddenly it's going to rain for really strong for like five minutes. So it's a really good time to talk about this topic. Uh, so we will be giving five main points or tips on what you can do when it's raining outside and you really have to go out. If you have to go to the grocery, go to the drugstore, and for any kind of errand. So number one, the very first thing you should consider is to assess the road conditions. For example, do not risk, do not risk yourself and the car if you're having doubts about your car's ability or capability on taking on, taking on a flooded road. For example, my main rule I always follow here is that I'm never the first car to conquer like a flooded road. I wait for other cars to go first to see if they'll make it. <laughs> That's really if smart. I, if I really have to pass that road. But of course, it doesn't stop there. You also have to consider what kind of car you're driving. So if we're talking about flooded roads, if you're in, for example, a sedan like a Vios, you also want to assess the road conditions or other cars who are also driving the same kind of, kind of car as you. For example, under Vios, a City or Civic. But if you see like a Hilux or like a Montero going through the flood with no problem, of course, that's not something you follow, right? <laughs> that's something you don't want to risk. Yeah. Uh, How about you so guys? Like, uh, building on that, uh, even in off-roading, like if you're river crossing, you even if you're like on a well-suited vehicle you actually have to check the river first there's like a like a sort of motto if you cannot walk it you probably cannot drive it either so even for those on with suvs uh, if you really want to go through the flood you'll really have to know either know the terrain really well or like go down from your car and check it yourself <laughs> i mean through the flood water which i wouldn't be doing but always err on the side of caution. If you don't have to go through the flood, don't brave through it. Uh, play smart. All right. Well, let's look at it. Know. Let's look at it. what uh, Nix is talking about going deep. But most of the people that are going to be listening to this, they're not going to get out of their car to walk it if they're just going home or in their urban setting. Francis, you have a basic sedan. Um, what are your concerns and what are your guidelines? Well, if you have a basic sedan, you have to be more careful uh, as compared to those who have, uh, let's say, an SUV or a pickup. I guess the gauge there would be like gutter deep floods would be the maximum uh, limit mm, for a normal good. sized sedan. Other than that, if it the water's above the gutter, I don't think you should go through it. There. Really? There's no way. I, I yeah. 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 <laughs> Well, today's, well if, wow. if, if, if you look at today's sedans, they're lower actually. Like have you yeah, seen yeah. that? Like That's from cool. the Camry. Well, yeah, you're right. You're running hot Civic. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not only I actually that, really but, you know, it's a Civic. So well, I agree with Nick. <laughs> yeah. Only you, you only go through a flood if you really have to. 
But yeah, you have but like other options. By all means, please. Yeah, wait. Do avoid the you know, of blood, you know. Actually, uh, that's also one thing. Uh, I don't mind turning around and yes. taking up more time to, to mm. go home. Yes. I really, as much as possible, I wouldn't brave through a flood, even if it's uh, assuming because uh, I drive a sedan. So even if it's like less than gutter deep, if I see like a huge accumulation, I rarely go through it unless I really have to. If there's, if I can easily turn around and I have already a different route in mind, I do that most of the time. Yeah. Because you don't know what's on the water there. Eh? Like it, yes. if, there's like a, the if there's a manhole that's you know open, like there's that's too true. many factors. That's so. true. You can't see. That's very, very true. Yeah. Uh one, there's another no, there's another thing. Uh, when I used to commute between Quezon City, Makati, and Manila. Before I my decision on what route I would take uh in the rain, I'd always end up going back to Edsa because at least I know what the road is. You know, um, and I know the ex escape routes and I know where it's deep. Uh, for example, if I'm going somewhere else, there could be a hole, there could be standing water I don't see. One of the things about these floods, let, let's, let's point out a couple of things, by the way. Number one, the first drain is always the most dangerous because it lifts the grit, mm -hmm. grime and oil off the surface of the road. So it makes it more slippery, which is fun if you want to drift a car, but otherwise <laughs> it's not. So remember that. Second thing to remember is that um, you might want to plow through <laughs> uh, the rain because it's fun. That's true. It is. But remember that also remember that if there's standing water on one side or the other, that wheel can be pulled. From your from your own hands, and you're going to be pulled in that direction. So if you're just remember that you're gonna you might have to manhandle that wheel uh, and don't jerk, but just keep a firm mm -hmm. uh, thing on it. Correct. Okay, uh, so that th those are the things that we're talking about for basic stuff. Uh, there's a lot more. There's one point that Paula brought up prior to this uh, discussion, which was, is your stuff ready? Uh, I realized that uh, when I got hit with the first rain. I was really, really glad to see my, honestly, PIAA windshield wipers because I had just changed them. And that's something you forget about until you need it. But I got caught out and I was really glad I changed them. What yeah. are the other things, Paolo? What other things should yeah. we be looking at? Especially yeah. now, right? So, We've um, got sun. What should we be looking at? Yeah. So the things that we'll be talking about, it's like, if you think about it, it's common sense. But sometimes you forget about it. Mm -hmm. Just Overlook. like how you mentioned the the wipers. So other things to consider in your car's equipment are do your tires still have enough thread? So sometimes uh, we forget about that too. Sometimes you just need to rotate the tires, especially if uh, the front tires are don't have much threads already. Sometimes you can just uh, exchange the tires from the rear. But if it's really bad already, you have to change it uh, because it can really hamper the control and the maneuverability of the car. Another thing is your lights. Are your headlights working, your taillights? Because in heavy downpours, the car at the back might have a hard time seeing you. So you need to have your taillights on. Do you guys have anything else you think that might be important? Aside from the tires, you should also um, have your brakes checked. Not oh, yeah. Like everything else, now is a good time to have your brakes checked. Because that's only, you know, not only will you the car will be safer with the new tires, but you'll, you'll also be able to brake better. As as car care also is also concerned, so there are some people who don't like to have their cars washed during the rainy season. But actually, in the way I see it, it's the opposite. You have to have your cars washed <laughs> more frequently during the rainy season. This is to I prevent the accumulation of, you know, the tar build up the asphalt on the other side, the rocker panels. You'd be surprised at how much tar build up there is during the rainy season, as opposed to like let's say the summer months. So the more it's more necessary to have your cars cleaned more often during the rainy season. So there. That's that's a good point, huh? Also, yeah. if your car doesn't move, like right now, we're going into, for everyone that doesn't know this, we're going into ECQ again, which means we're not gonna be able to move as much. Our car's gonna get Potentially moldy, uh, musty inside. Uh, yeah. I have a question: Are do do molds form for cars not parked in a garage? So it it's a mix it of air and moisture. If, if, 
if you park under a tree yeah, or something. something. Yes. Okay, mold can come from spores in the air. It can come from moisture that will allow wetness to stay inside. That's what actually Francis and I were sorting out. Uh, we went to a shop to try and isolate where my issues were with the Civic. There are different things. I What I tend to do, honestly, I have this huge household uh, dehumidifier. And in these times, I just run it inside the car. It, you can use things like those little plastic containers that have little balls of mm -hmm. material yeah. that, that yeah. suck up. That, those are useful too, but I, I go hardcore. And I put a big household. What's nice, it also removes the scent. So, like if, you yeah, have, yeah. if your car has yeah. a certain scent that you want to remove, yeah. the dehumidifier de de yeah. is the best way yeah. to eliminate it. Yeah. So so something it, what, what do you do? Ahead. So you plug it in your garage outlet and then you put yes. the humidifier inside the car? Yes. Oh. Um, then it actually basically runs all night. Okay. And it, I, I find it very useful. One other thing, by the way, is, uh, let's, the reason the, the, the depth of the tread is important is because tires are meant to evacuate water from whatever's below. Uh, mm -hmm. The less the less space there is, the less thickness. It's not it's not actually the rubber that we're looking at. It's the space between the rubber. Uh, if it's like this, we want the water to be flowing out because it, it all. If you look at the way a tire looks, there's a there's a direction in which it has to flow. Make yeah. sure your tire is set the right way. By the way, a lot of them are directional nowadays. Make sure you're doing that for right. For that reason. Uh, for that reason. Yeah, exactly. Um, otherwise, you're just going to be catching water. Now, there's another thing. And, and I found this out because I've been stuck for a long time in floods. Bring bags. Bring uh, always, and, and you know, your kids know this, right? They all, all our kids now have to bring go bags to school or emergency bags. Bring water, bring food, bring some tools, you know? Bring a container anyway that if your car messes up, if, you need to, if it overheats or whatever, it is possible to overheat in the rain because your yep. car's not moving. Uh, there's no air going through it, okay? So just be aware of little things like that. Um, what, else, what else can we prepare with? I like, the, I like the headlights thing and the lights. Well, how do you guys feel? This is going to be, uh, well, let's not go this way, but some people fight about whether or not you should have your blinkers on. Uh, oh, that's, that's lights, easy. You mean? Well, they're a good point. No, they're good points for both. Um, and everyone is very, very violently one way or the other. I think it's a personal decision, you know. Uh, and, and honestly, automatically, nowadays, uh, there are particularly European cars where if things start getting wild, they'll automatically turn on. So, there. no, that, but that's for act, not for like heavy rain or flood, but like yeah, actually it is. Um, there, really? some of them are starting to do that. If they start I, sensing, I didn't know that. if they start sensing, first of all, they, it starts coming on if you brake hard already. No, that okay. yeah, that's what yeah. I know. Uh, yeah, that I know. Remember that braking hard is a function of assessing traction and uh, force. Um, and there is, they are able to tie this very easily into if they're sensing rain, weather, and so on. This is all going to be tied in, especially if you're looking at automated cars. And if you're looking at automated cars, the natural thing to do will be to turn those things on. And there's a reason for it. You just can't be seen. There's one, one thing I learned, by the way, is uh, if there's any rain at all, I, I watch my back. Uh, I may, I'm, I, if I see anyone behind me or if I start seeing stuff, I might not turn on my uh, blinkers, but I will tap my brakes. No, that one's, yeah. yeah, that one's okay. good. Uh, well, there's a, you just got to tap it not hard enough to unbalance your car. Yeah, but, then but then enough to signal at the back, like they, so that they see the red. That's yeah. why it's red, because it's, it's the first color that I will see. Yeah. Yeah, this particular point you have, Carl, on like tapping your brakes is especially applicable in expressways driving you know uh, what, because um, yeah you know you know one thing i found i kept getting rear-ended there was a there was a there was a series where i was getting rear-ended and i couldn't figure out why and all i did was something that they teach you in motorcycling which is uh i watch the back i if i see a car coming in i just flash my lights uh i hit the brakes a couple times so what was happening was i would come to a stop and i would handbrake and I would get off my brakes. And so, and it was, I usually get hit by jeepneys. Um, and what would happen is that they just, uh, in their mind, the trigger is the brake light. So they're wrong completely. I'm still the one that pays for everything. So I learned that. Okay. okay. Uh, next thing. Uh, 
how do you avoid or manage hydroplaning? Yeah. Hydroplaning is the fun thing where you lose traction. I think this is the next topic. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> what, what are you implying? <laughs> no, nothing. <laughs> Drifting. <laughs> Drifting. No, uh, hy hydroplaning kasi is, it's associated with how, well, in this case, how little contact you have on the road. So like what uh, Carl was saying a while ago, that's why tire treads really important. You have to have them checked because that's the one that avoids hydroplaning. Because hydroplaning is the moment when you have no more contact with the with the road and all your contacts on the water like you're not able to dissipate is that the right word or remove wa enough water to maintain traction so when that happens do not put any sudden inputs whether it's brakes throttle steering all all those controls it has to be as light as possible look at where you want to go because that's where you, like instinctively you'll draw yourself towards to so if the if you feel like the car is like moving starting to move sideways maintain uh eye contact with where you want to go because your body will adjust there eh? and then just wait till you have contact back on the road and then you'll be able to get away from that situation because the slow like the, the truth is the slower you get the the heavier the car will become and then the more chances you have to have contact on the road. Yes, that's correct. That's very, very, very true. Uh, um, we have modern cars that have amazing systems that keep traction going. None of that works if they lose mm -hmm. friction, okay? And it's not like when you're talking about drifting or, or whatever, when we're trying to induce a lack of friction. In this case, what happens is there's just nothing there. And Nix is correct in, in that sense that you got to ride it out. You, you can, he, he's right. You got to remember that as you are moving, you might suddenly get friction again. So be ready for it. And it yeah. might not be the way you expect it. And yes, he's correct. Uh, as you slow down, your weight will bring down, hopefully, the tires closer to somewhere they can grab. That's yeah. very, very true. Uh, it's very, actually, very scary because you suddenly lose control. Actually funny because the, I, I remember like a week before a certain event happened, which I'll go in a bit, uh, Carl sent me to a drifting class. <laughs> no, but which is so when I was in the no, drifting I, class, I remember them telling me like it looks like the cars are out of control, but mm -hmm. when you're drifting, it's you you're it's, you're the most conscious of the control and traction of the car. Like it, the dichotomy of drifting, it looks like you're out of control, but it's actually you have the most control of the car. You have understand. The weight distributions, the traction, mm -hmm. this and that. You control the factors. And then a week later, it was like signal number three. I was like on my way home from the office. And Carl told us to leave early because it was really bad. That kind of bad. And I remember like in front of me, it was like uh, there were like a SUV, a pickup, and then me at the time, Genesis Coupe. And then a really strong gush of wind came out. And no one was exempted. All the cars got pushed. And I, I remembered, like, what I was taught in the drifting class. Maintain eye contact where you want to go because your body will adjust accordingly. Mm -hmm. So, yun. So, like, I, I, I just, um, like, uh, I didn't put any violent inputs or I, all, everything was, like, light input and everything just to maintain that control. Everyone else hit the guardrail except me. I was able to get through, luckily. You know, and point the steering wheel where you want to go. Yes. Light. Mm-hmm. You know, so, like, something it, about hy mm. hydroplaning, because me, I've never experienced it. But whenever I hear stories about it, I'm just like, wow, that's like really scary, like to lose control of your car at high speeds. Yeah. So I just want to take this opportunity also to like to point out for those people, like you can never be too careful. Some because I would say, well, I've never experienced that. Like, so they're not really afraid. So. Don't wait for it to happen to you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that's just one thing. And I think that's also where you, like, especially you're in the highway, you have to really be as focused as, as you, sh as you, you know, you, sh you should be as focused on the road. Because I think where people make the violent reactions is because all of a sudden, like, it's like from being super relaxed, they're in a state where they're not comfortable in. Yeah. Because they just like, get scared. My my experience, at least for me, it, it was like all of a sudden your car feels like it's floating. 
That's how like like the hydro planing felt like for me. And you're flying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like flying. it feels like you're flying, diba? Right? Yeah. If you're like comfortably driving, all of a sudden you have that feeling, you're not focused, you're going to like make those uh knee jerk reactions when in fact the one that will save you is if you were focused the whole time and you felt it, you're like, Okay, I feel like I'm flying. Don't do any don't no sudden movements. And then you, and you mentioned something. Too. Yeah, did you hydroplane again? Yes, I have. Maybe around did you survive? four years ago. I'm so oh, here. Oh, she is here. So, so, so. <laughs> no, I mean, I mean uh, you didn't get into an accident. You didn't get no, into an accident. I didn't. I didn't. Oh, so but I was also tell us what happened, South. please. I was actually about to exit in Phil and Vest. I was going to Alabang. And it wasn't raining anymore, but this was after uh, a terrible rain too. So after spending around three hours on the road, I was so happy to finally reach... My, the exit I was going to, and it wasn't raining anymore. But I admittedly was starting to speed up because I was just too tired and too excited to, you know, like get to my destination. Yeah, I that's didn't normal. notice. And and this is in relation to always assessing the road, even if it's not raining anymore. I didn't yeah. notice that there was actually like I thought it was just like a puddle of water, like a really shallow puddle, but there was like the asphalt disintegrated and there was like a lot of lobak already on the road and I didn't notice that. So I was coming in quite fast. I'm so sorry. To, <laughs> I'm so sorry. Please don't do that. I was, I was quite coming in fast, but not too fast to like, you know, cause cause any problems. And as I was about to turn in the mm-hmm. Phil Invest exit, because that, that approaches into a, quite a sharp turn, right? So I, when I was about to turn, I hydroplaned and I was with like four people we were four in the car. I was the I wasn't the only one, and everyone was screaming. <laughs> my friends all screamed because they were like, "Oh my god, are we gonna die?" But <laughs> but they all noticed the feeling, right? They all noticed yes. it. Yes, uh... yes. Like there was okay. like like in between the screaming of like three other people, there was also like silence, and you felt like God was getting you already or something. You actually felt like you were gonna die or you would get into an accident. I guess for like a college student, that's what you would feel. But I was fortunately calm, and I just, uh, I, I I went against the, I went against the direction of the steering wheel because I was already like I was already overturning, so I just yeah. um, made garbage, you know. I just did it. I just mm-hmm. tried to really um, keep the the wheel straight, and yes, there. By the time we arrived at the tall at the the exit tall. It's as if nothing happened. So it was like I think I don't know. It's like a five seconds maybe or ten seconds. I don't really know. And your friends are like, than <gasps> yeah, my, my friends are all quiet from from from. No, then you could say to... I charge extra for that. Oh yeah, but yeah. then uh, everyone's quiet. Yeah, I have a question. I have a question. Okay, um, were you when you're saying you were hydroplaning? Do you mean that was the car spinning around? Was it, it was just kind of okay? Because you said you you were overturning. Do you mean you were tipping over, or do you mean that you were counter steering? Counter. I was I was about to spin out, so I had to I had to counter. Counter steer. Um, yeah. Yeah, but I did feel that I I I felt like I was flying. Flying. Like, off that's, the ground. That's, that's, the, the vehicle okay, was off the ground. There was a lot but of water. But when you when you did that, when you counter steered. What was the effect of the counter steer? It felt like I was driving. I was suddenly driving a, a rescue boat rather than a car. It felt very buoyant. Yeah. It felt but then that buoyant. means you had some traction. You so had was I, something was I biting was about, somewhere. Yeah, I was. I so. was turning right, a hard right. All right. I was turning a hard right, uh, and so I. So the he was kind was of in, drifting. Yeah, yeah, basically. Yeah. I was kind um, of. I was mm, kind of, yeah. but not because you, you're not supposed to do that. So I was kind. No, of, no. Okay. Uh, Okay, for those that don't know this, Dan is in a family of car geeks, uh, and they are drifters. Tell us about your family, Dan. Oh, my dad used to race. Uh, my dad used to be a rally driver, so he used to join Rally ng Pilipinas and among other things uh, when I was younger. And when we grew up, my brother followed suit, so. He started in slalom, went to force. He also does rally, autocross, and all that. So yeah, I, I actually learned how to counter hydroplaning at an early age. There um, you go. Yeah. 
it was one of the things that I was taught to me, not intentionally though. I think it was just the philosophy. And this was, this was also something that I saw in Cars the movie, <laughs> the the animated film, when yeah. Doc Hudson and Lightning McQueen were out yeah. there somewhere oh. in the desert, and they were yes. having a heart to heart conversation, and. Doc Hudson was gonna reveal to Lightning McQueen that he was actually the Hudson Hornet of before. He showed Lightning McQueen that to turn right, you have to turn left, and that's mm-hmm. always something that I ju- that, that stuck with me because as a kid, like as a baby, I uh, rode in my dad's race car. So that's also always something that I hear from them. I hear from my titos. I hear from his friends, mm-hmm. especially mm-hmm. rally drivers who love do all that. So. I guess it was sort of like instinct also. Like when that happened, yeah. when, that, uh, when mm-hmm. the incident happened, but it was just like instinct. Like it was in my reflex already to, to just turn it the other way and yeah. just to stay really, really calm. Because all my friends were panicking, but I wasn't. So I guess yeah. I, I got I, used to it. But for people who don't have that experience, it's we have to go back to the basic principles of physics and you have to cancel out whatever is too much of the other of yeah. the other direction or the other force and state of mind also i think the fact that you like you said like the whole time you were as calm as you could ever be and like and seeing your friends that they were surprised the right? if you yeah. swap with one of your friends na in replacing the calm you with one of your shocked friends i think it would have ended badly mindset mindset's everything yeah, for me at least but at mm-hmm. least you'll be in maximum control which is the number one thing control yeah. There's a reason um, the, the push right to go left thing, that's very, very, it's much more evident in motorcycles because mm-hmm. in motorcycles, uh, it's very, very clear that you're not using the front wheel to turn. You're using the front wheel to change your balance. And when you push this way, you kind of flick your bike and your balance goes this way. And it's your balance yeah. that's moving the car, moving the bike. And it's the same thing with cars. That's why I like... Uh, going out in sports cars because you really feel it you read and especially not in modern ones where everything's controlled right but like i because of the whole pandemic i've been in my na miata which you feel every single thing but i'm remembering now what it's like to feel traction on one side or feel weight shift and have that reason you know have that being the reason you do things so yeah it, it's um yeah. but it's 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 very very important for me to for people to who know this stuff yeah and doing you, the scandinavian flick <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. I wonder who knows what that is. <laughs> but that was a big Moment. deal at the time, huh? Yeah, that was yeah. a big deal at the time. That's how rally drivers used to turn. Yeah. Yes. That's what I was taught. <laughs> yes, the Scandinavian <laughs> flick. <laughs> That's what I the Scandinavian drift is their favorite. It's their favorite. Yeah. Um, Anyway, just going back to what you guys said about um, the big debate with turning on your hazard lights in general, we are also told that we're not supposed to do that. So, um, Paolo, what are the reasons why you're not really supposed to turn your hazard lights when you're out in the rain? Well, for one thing, it confuses the other cars behind you on what direction what you're, you're actually going. So if you're planning to overtake on the left or you're planning to change things to the right, they don't know which direction. Uh, so it's very confusing. Like I, I understand where they're coming from because they wanna, like when it's raining really hard, visibility is hampered. They want other cars to see them. But at the same time, it makes other people have a hard time knowing on what kind of direction they will take. So. The best solution for this, I think, like I, I was actually surprised when Carl said there are modern cars now whose hazard, hazard lights would turn on automatically and heavy downpours. But I always thought that you should just turn on your headlights and your taillights and you use your blinkers for when you change lane. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. Um, there. What I was okay. saying, okay, when, my explanation for that is that it's a feature I've seen on prototypes and, and test units. I don't know because it, it's a very contentious thing. There are people who believe it completely one way and believe it completely another way and they get violently opposed to it. So it really comes down to, you know, all that is fine, but if they can't see you, they can't see you, period. And there are times I've come up on cars that the only thing I saw was that blinking yellow light. 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, was, it, was, it, was it because their taillights were not on? No, they're on. You just can't see them. They're not bright enough. It's that simple. It's really, it's really, you know, there's also, there's also um question now, um, and, and we actually see this in watches, as to whether or not red is the brighter, uh, it, it really depends on the, uh, on the condition. For example, some people think it's actually yellow that is the brighter color. Uh, the more attention getting color. It's just that in, in, in our world now, we're more attuned to red being the stop. Yeah. Uh, okay. Red, so. red, okay, from what I know, uh, red is the one that catches attention quicker than yellow, but uh, well, ye that's, yellow cuts through like uh, obstruction better. That's possible, but that's a, that's constantly debatable. Uh, mm -hmm. Whether it and and it's that's the thing. Is. So uh, rather than going going the direction of of having the discussion on that, it really comes down, comes down to how do you counter this? How do you get yourself? You know, if you need to be seen, if there is a big truck behind you that doesn't see you. How do you handle that? Uh, one can be by tapping your brakes. One can be by turning on your flashers for a while, turning them off if you have to do anything. If you're, if you're going through flooded areas or bad weather or so on, you don't want to be changing lanes anyway unless you need to. To get it into the habit of just assume no one behind you can see you. So if you've got to put those hazards, hazard lights on, if you feel you do, just remember that if you need to change lanes or signify to someone behind you that you are moving, Turn them off, give them a lot of leeway, you know. And and this goes into our other discussion, which is how much distance do you need? Everyone says like two car lengths or three car lengths or whatever. The best explanation I've seen is give yourself two seconds in between the car in the front three, of you. You're driving. The three uh, second rule, but that's yes, two or three terrain. seconds depending on. I mean, obviously, the, increase oh, yeah, it. Your skill level. Yeah. yeah, increase it. No, increase it also for no for. Uh, I wouldn't say skill level. I'd say increase it if. Um, the, the weather's bad because you just can't physically see, you know, if, you know, if, if your visibility is only 20 feet in front of you, dude. Here, uh, so, okay, no, just to put the perspective, uh, for, for people out there, if a reg, like, if you get a regular car, good, and this is good threads, uh, if it, if it breaks at, like, from 100 to 0 at 70 meters or 80, just introduce light rain it'll go as far as 120 meters. So that's a 50 meter difference of worth of breaking. So that's why when I, I, like I tell my friends that if it's the three second rule when it's not raining, bump it up to five or six because yeah. you lose almost half of the capability. Even with the best tires, you know, even with the a light condition, it doesn't discriminate at that point, eh? Cause like when when the roads the roads wet already, it's just only a matter of difference between like if there's like uh, oil on the road or hydro planing level. Mm -hmm. But other than that, it's the same. Like you lose four ah fifty percent of your traction, or even sixty. So yeah. Yeah, everyone out there, when it's raining, like throttle down. If you're going at a hundred, throttle down to seventy or even up to sixty. And uh, if it's the three-second rule, bring it up to five to six seconds already. Keep a lot of distance. So when it comes to the hazard, the, the reason the, why I think it's very debatable is because it, it brings the confusion of, is the car in front of me hazard because he wants to be seen or because he's at a full stop? And then it's when someone gets it wrong now. I think he's moving, but he's on a full stop. That's where the accidents happen. And I've seen one happen myself. Yeah, that's correct. However, understand that at least they saw you. That's yeah. the point so, of everybody else. Yeah. So so anyway, so going back to, we were talking about the safe distance. You were saying three seconds uh, in good conditions. What? Well, let, let's explain that. Three seconds means, let's say, if there's a car in front of you, uh, he should have passed something, and then you wait three seconds before you pass it. That's what you mm -hmm. mean, correct? Yes, uh, correct. Okay, uh, because that that rather than the two car length rule, which doesn't take that in speed into account, this takes speed into account. So what yes, you're uh, saying is that, see, I was thought, well, a long time ago, two seconds to three seconds. So you're saying three seconds. I think that's safer. Yeah, um, uh, the, then we the add reason to that. being, because mm, the reason be, why three, if people ask why three seconds, because it takes. 1.5 seconds for an average person to parang to notice to parang to take notice of something and another 1.5 seconds to react so total of 3 seconds to be able to react right. cleanly 
That's why it's parang rated at three seconds. Okay. So no, no, for, that some, makes sense. For, for some, that's why for some, like, let's say you, Carl, it's two seconds because that's enough time for you to no, no, no. No, no. and react. Uh. Not at all. I'm, I'm not saying to go two seconds. I, I'm just saying that mm-hmm. uh, when I was initially taught, um, it was by car length. And then they realized ah, sorry, that two, that was incorrect. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and they said, realize that doesn't take into account all these other things. So it became mm-hmm. a two-second thing. Now it's a three-second thing. I'm not advocating two seconds at all. And I do yeah, yeah, not yeah. think that um, it's dependent. I think you should follow uh, the, the best safety standards you know. Yeah. Um, please also understand that um, this is fine if the car in front of you is moving and reacting the same way. That car can come to a sudden stop not because of braking, but because it hit someone, and all of a sudden yeah. you're gonna plow into it. Okay, yeah. so uh, and there's one more. Th- okay, uh, basically we've we've kind of had the discussion. We can discuss this for quite a while. Uh, the the one thing that I would like to remind everyone is that you know you have a massive amount of weight running through, and you're trying to control it. And when it's raining, or when there's water, or when there's bad visibility, all these things are affecting it. Um, so a simple thing like getting off the gas fast can change the balance of your car. When oh, yeah. you change the balance of your car, what happens is that um, you load, let's say if you get off the gas and you're not even on the brakes, you get off the gas, the, your rear will be lighter, your front will be heavier, and your front is already yeah. fighting for traction. Okay, mm-hmm. It might yeah. break because you did that. If you, if you know racing, you understand that. You're, you're balancing traction. As Mario Andretti said, brakes aren't for braking. Brakes are for adjusting where you want the car to go. Very he said good. it much better Very than I did. Yeah. So let's just all try and remember that. We went through several things. Uh, what can we, we discussed? Assess the road condition. We discussed check your car, make sure it's okay for all this. We discussed the fun and fear of hydroplaning. We discussed whether or not you should or should not turn on your hazard lights. And we discussed maintain a proper distance. Um, oh, let's yeah. all try and remember that. Um, We are getting into a situation where you can get into a car after two weeks of not using it and suddenly have to go in the rain to an emergency room or something. Let's try and remember all that. Dan, on one hand, you're the least car geeky of us. On the other hand, you grew up with a bunch of car geeks in your family that were racing. So do you feel we've left anything out? What are the things that people should know in the event that they had to like pass a very flooded road and they conquered it um what are the what are the things that they should immediately check because i think this is one of the things that people often most forget asked, like right? after mm-hmm. yeah most mo- they forget about it the most right so after conquering and you know patting themselves at the back congratulating <laughs> themselves that they successfully conquered a yeah. very flooded road and that's quite a lot in Metro manila right what 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 oh. things that they should check before? Brakes. And- yeah, brakes is one. Like, Dry your brakes off. Like, but uh, don't like do it by braking too hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, also check if there are debris under the wheel wells or under the bumpers. Mm, that's you know? true too. Yeah. Like you're dragging um, something. And yeah. if you if you plowed through the flood, check your engine bay also. Like how, like because especially if your engine engine gets submerged, you're gonna have to change oil and everything. Have it serviced. Mm. That's true too. Yes. Um, stuff gets up there. It can get, it's interesting. People think, you know, you need a snorkel or whatever, but you don't, Uh, you just need to understand how, you know, at what level the car is meant to be safe and be, and forward. And then it it has to, it has more to do with nowadays electronics, but nowadays they're trying to move uh, all the electronics up. Right. So. Yeah. Uh, that's why like, uh, I I think one of our episodes, B-Boy mentioned that just because you put a snorkel doesn't mean you can wade yeah. through water that high. Yeah. Like long story short, long story short. Yeah. Okay. So we've gone through all that. We hope you all stay safe. It's a nice, sunny, windy day right now that can change in an instant. So it's changing already. Be ready. Yeah. It's changing already. <laughs> Great. According to yeah. Den, yeah. according to Den, four four typhoons on the way for August. Uh, okay. Right. So prep your cars, guys. <laughs> prep your cars. Check your and tires. Prep your, prep your minds. <laughs> prep your minds. Very true. More than anything else, prep your minds. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, everyone. This has been Cars Casually Getting Back on the Radar after a while. 
uh, this has been Nix, this has been Paolo, this has been Francis, this has been Den as a ghost floating around somewhere, and this has been me, Carl. Thank you, thank you very, very much for joining us, whether you are joining us on video, on Spotify, on whatever, we appreciate it. Stay safe, stay well, stay dry. Thank you very much, everyone. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Bye.